Hey folks, it's Andrew from Gemba Red, and I just want to let you know we just published a brand new blog about what are the best near-infrared incandescent heat lamps. We measure nine different brands with advanced measurement techniques like our Hopo Color Spectrometer and our Thermopile Power Meter. So this should give one of the best representations of the intensity of the spectrum that anyone has even tried to achieve on this market. And I give you a simplified ranking to help you select which ones are best from GE to Therabulb, Fet Electric and Philips are some of my favorite brands. But again, all the brands I reviewed are the best in the market. Truly the only thing you should be avoiding when you're looking for any generic brands is if they have a shatterproof coating because a lot of times that coating will be PTFE or Teflon or sometimes silicone and that coating some people are concerned would off gas and, and be unpleasant. But honestly I haven't even been able to find any of those on the market so most of this market is the non-coated type. So anyway head to the Gemba Red blog search for 250 watt near infrared incandescent reviews. It has a lot of references, it has direct links to where you can find these, a lot of pictures, a lot of things that I can't really articulate in a in a YouTube video. Um, so anyway, so check that out. Now the rest of this video is gonna be all the testing that I did for that blog. So for full transparency, if you wanna learn about these things on your own and come up with your own conclusions and what you wanna buy for yourself, then watch the rest of this video. Uh, you know, maybe some people can learn some real true insight to these bulbs, how they're measured, what's going on with them, and maybe we, how we can improve them, how we can market them better, how we can un understand them in terms of photobiomodulation science. And that's ultimately the goal, that truth and data will help elevate everyone, even if sometimes the data doesn't look good for certain people. So our first test is we're going to be looking at the hot spots of each of the bulbs outputs and look for that shadow that ends up in the middle of a lot of these bulbs. Uh, while this is kind of a subjective test, it might be one of the most important tests that will have a huge impact on the intensity measurements that we get later on. So we're going to turn this whole rack around. We've got them all set up on the rack so that way they're all kind of equal distance uh, away and we're going to face the rack at the wall, turn on the lights, and then look for that hot spots, look for the donut shaped kind of uh, cold spot in the middle and then hot spot kind of ring in the outside. And you know, that, that'll be an important test. We want kind of good, um, almost uh, uniform intensity coverage over an area, kind of like what we want with red light therapy. We don't want a lot, of, a lot of hot spots. We want good uniform coverage that helps keep a consistent dose. So we've got them all set up here. Up top here, we've got the Ruby Lux. Then we've got the GE, then we've got the Therabulb, then down here we've got Philips, we've got the FET Electric, and then finally the uh, Sauna Space uh, Thermabulb. So that's all six bulbs of, you know, all the best in the business, but we'll see if there's any, any ones that really stand out, and this will be a huge component for the comfort and getting that right uh, light uniformity. Okay, we've got all our lamps on, and you know, this could be a good way to set up kind of a DIY sauna is to use this kind of uh, mesh rack and then hook up all the clamp lamps onto it. I think Bob, uh, Quantified Bob, has one of those blogs uh, where you hook them up to a shoe rack. Um, but anyway, let's, let's try to look at them one at a time because they're all kind of washing each other out and see if we can pick up on those, those hot spots. So one of the most dramatic bulbs is actually the Philips bulb. You see the middle part is almost like a big shadow, and then the rest of it is this donut ring around that middle shadow. So that can be a big problem if you're using at a further distance away. That shadow gets bigger and bigger, and so you're treating more of the outside rim of that donut ring, and the middle part is, is getting a big shadow. So just in a, as an example, we'll show you a measurement inside that shadow of a ring and then we'll show you on the the donut part and you'll see there's a dramatic difference So as we hold up the sensor to the middle of the circle, we see about 88 milliwatts on our power meter. 
So that's pretty low, you know, we're a decent distance away, but we're inside that shadow and we're getting 88. Now as I move it over to the side on top of that donut, that hot spot of a ring, we're going to get 128, 132. Uh, and so you can see it's a dramatic difference. It's not just an optical illusion. We've got a big difference from the middle point to the outer donut. Okay, so just to contrast what we're seeing with this shadow in the Phillips light bulb, uh, make sure our eyes are calibrated for what I'm going to show you next. We're going to look at one of the best light bulbs uh, is the th Therabulb. So the Therabulb has this nice pattern. It's kind of a ir irregular pattern, but it seems to help break up the light and break up that shadowy area so you still get um, kind of a tight spot and it, it looks much more uniform that, that you don't have any apparent shadow like you do. You see down there with the Phillips, there's very little shadow that I can see in the Therabulb, so we expect that to do well. Okay, so just to summarize, we've got the Phillips bulb on the right here that's got a big shadow. The Fet Electric also has a similar uh, pretty big shadow. And then we get over here to the Sauna Space uh, Thermalite, which doesn't have much of a shadow. It seems pretty tight of a of a circle, but you know it's got you know a little bit of a irregularity to it. So that's you know it's pretty good, but it's kind of weird. And then we go to the top rack here. And we've got the Therabulb, which looks like a very tight and uh, not much of a shadow, a lot of overlapping lines and doesn't seem like much of a shadow on the Therabulb. Uh, and then we've got the GE, which also looks pretty good. It's got a bunch of overlapping lines and not any apparent shadow to it. And then we've come over here to the Ruby Lux, which has a very strange pattern because see how the ring, it goes very wide. It's the widest kind of beam angle uh, that we would kind of call like a wide beam, beam angle from this Ruby Lux, which uh, let me turn off a couple of these bulbs and you can see it. So if we just have the Ruby Lux on, we see it's got a nice tight pattern in the middle, but then it's got a big ring on the outside and then the, and another hot spot ring that's very wide out there. So it's a very interesting pattern. We'll see how it turns out. So it's got a nice tight pattern. It's got a wide coverage, which, you know, I'm not sure if that's good or bad, um, but you know, we can really contrast it with this very wide pattern to the much more tight pattern that we see from the Therabulb. Very tight. We're going to expect that to be a high intensity, even though, you know, both of these are pretty much the same wattage, the same power, uh, it really, it's going to come down to these optics and, you know, uh, each of these bulbs, the optics is a little bit different with how the reflectors are built. So we've got three new bulbs for this year's review. We've got the Halco Prism brand model. So it's just the Halco bulb and this is their packaging. Uh, looks very nice. They identify themselves as red infrared heat lamp. Uh, but it's just just the packaging so still 250 watt. It's got the red coating and that's all we're looking for We've got the the Satco bulb. It's a generic looking bulb, but again, it's the same Fundamental thing. It's 250 watts red infrared um, So it doesn't matter what they label it is fundamentally an incandescent bulb will always have a very similar spectrum to other ones then we have the Westinghouse brand, which is a generic packaging, but it does very well. It looks looks very good. Uh, it's 250 watt heat lamp, and that's that's all we're we're going for. It doesn't need to be anything fancy. They're all fundamentally the same, so you can have a lot of different choices for where you shop, and if you can find them affordably or locally, then that's the best way to do it. Okay, let's turn these on. Okay, let's do a close-up of some of these. So we're going to look at the Halco first. And we do see we get that donut ring, so we get that big shadow in the middle. Um, but the nice thing about the Halco, it's got that deeper red kind of color. And the other ones are a little bit more orangey. Um, so the Halco is almost like it's got that coating all the way down to its base. 
and it's got that deeper red, almost like the Therabulb and um, sauna space bulb. So if you want kind of like a budget kind of replacement for those bulbs, uh, it would be the Halco. But again, you know, I don't like this the shadow pattern, but we'll see how the, the measurements go, turn out. Then let's look at the Sacco again. All three of these have the same um, problem as the, the Philips and the FET electric. Um, Sacco is not as bad with the donut, but it does have a small donut in the middle there. Um, but it doesn't seem seem as dramatic, so maybe the Sacco would be a little bit better than um, most of these generic brands uh, in terms of uh, like the light uniformity. And in the Westinghouse, again, it's very similar um, maybe to like the GE. It's got some of that similar shadow in the middle, that donut. Um, so, you know, it's not great, but again, the, uh, these are really, we're really getting nitpicky here, but um, they're all good bulbs. Uh, I would definitely use them if, if I had to. Um, so uh, really just giving you a lot of different options. Okay, so I'll show you the experimental setup just for the first bulb. We're taking a look at the Therabulb. Uh, we're going to do all these measurements at 18 inches away, which is usually the recommended distance to be from a heat lamp so you don't get too much intensity that would overheat your skin. But again, you know, you kind of have to do it by feel. Uh, if you want to increase, you know, close the distance, then you get more intensity. If you're further away, you get less intensity. So again, it's a matter of preference and how comfortable you feel and maybe monitor your skin temperature. So again, we got our power meter set up. So we're reading 268 watts. So that's gonna be, you know, measurement right at the sensor at about 18 inches away. We lined it up with the center point of the light. So if the light has a big shadow, then that's gonna be a big problem if it's got that shadow in the middle. The Therabulb does not have that problem. It might be one of the highest intensity bulbs that we read because that intensity is gonna be very concentrated to a smaller spot. So then we'll also be checking a limited spectrum because this only goes up so high and we'll just see how that spectrum looks. So we see it's a nice spectrum uh, you know, again, you get a lot of red. Let's let it focus here. We get a lot of red um, and a lot of near infrared. And this is how we'll be doing it. So according to this, from the, that red to near infrared range, it should be about 12 milliwatts. So, you know, that's your red to near infrared if you're really interested in, in that. And then we'll also calculate it another way based on the power meter and our theoretical spectrum. So remember the power meter, this we're reading as 264 milliwatts because we're going to ignore the decimal place and we want to know milliwatts. And then we're going to divide by 3.14159. That's the pi. That's that's the air, actually the literal area of, of the sensor. And so we get 84 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So that's the total intensity over the entire spectrum, like I showed you with that theoretical spectrum. It does go into some of those longer wavelengths past 1,000, maybe a little bit past 2,000. So that's the entire spectrum. So let's say if that's the entire spectrum is 84 milliwatts per centimeter squared, that includes a lot of uh, mid-infrared, um, but let's say we just want to know the proportion that we estimated from Planck's law, and we're going to do this times 0.25, since about 25% should be in that red to near infrared range, we get 21 milliwatts per centimeter squared. So that's 21 milliwatts per centimeter squared in that photobiomodulation range. But again, you're also probably getting some heat and some mid infrared as well. Those are beneficial on their own. So you can't just ignore the whole spectrum. You have to be aware of the total intensity and that you're kind of limited by the heat effects that you don't want too much heat. So anyway, that's the quick rundown for how we're going to do the rest of the bulbs. So we just did the Therabulb. It seems to have a pretty high intensity. Again, it's, it's very concentrated to one spot. Okay, we're going to look at the Ruby Lux now. Um, again, everything is the same, except we just swap out the bulb every time, so everything can kind of stay in the same position. And we've got the power meter, and it's only reading 72 now. So we see the impact of that wider spread that, that we were seeing from kind of aiming it at the wall and seeing the shadow. The impact is that it's very spread out, and you get a lower intensity 
at the center point where we're taking our measurements. So for example, the therabulb was at 264 milliwatts at the center point, and we're only at 76. So we're just gonna check what this equivalent intensity would be. It's 76 divided by 3.14159 is 24. So you're only getting 24 milliwatts. And again, that's the whole spectrum. Like I said, if we do 24 times 25%, if, if we're assuming that's just the red and near infrared, you're only getting six milliwatts per centimeter squared of that intensity in, in that near infrared range. So the Ruby, Ruby Lux has kind of a, a normal spectrum, kind of a flat line up from the from the red, because again, the red's just giving it that red tint. Um, but it's pretty normal. If we see the milliwatts per centimeter squared of this range is only three. So, you know, we estimated from our calculation was about six. This is saying only three from, you know, about 600 to uh, about 1050 you only get three milliwatts per centimeter squared. So not a lot of, you know, photobiomodulation. Like I said, maybe it's more spread out, so you're getting more coverage area, but you're not getting that concentrated intensity at the center point. So let's look at the GE lamp. You know, again, this is a very modest packaging. You could easily overlook it as, you know, it just calls itself a 250 watt heat lamp. It, I picked up one at a local Walmart. So, and you know, they're only 10 to 15 bucks each. So it's very easy to overlook them because they don't have all that flashy medical claims on the packaging and, oh, we're near infrared therapy or infrared therapy or whatnot. They just call themselves a heat lamp. It's very easy to miss this and not appreciate it's the exact same technology as all these other lamps, as the Ruby Lux and the Therabulb and the Sauna Space. Um, and you can get very similar benefits. You can save money and it seems to be a very good bulb. So we see again the, the power output, the 244 milliwatts is very high. Again, it's almost uh, as much as the Therabulb in terms of that intensity. Remember the therapult was up around 260 and then the Ruby Lux was much lower because of that beam spread. The GE seems to be doing very well having that tighter beam spread and not having that kind of donut shaped shadow. So I would easily say this is my top pick if you need a budget affordable light bulb that gives you the therapy without all the bells and whistles and you can save a bunch of money especially if you're buying a bunch to build a sauna. So let's check the spectrum with the spectrometer for the GE bulb. Okay, it comes back, looks very similar to the spectrum of the Ruby Lux, but again, it's much more concentrated. So we are getting that 12 milliwatts per centimeter squared, very similar to the Therabulb. So again, it's very com comparable. If you want that red to near infrared range, 12 milliwatts per centimeter squared is, is a good amount to get a therapeutic response. So it's very good results for an off the shelf heat lamp, very affordable. You can save a ton of money and it works very similarly to the Therabulb. Okay, let's get this sauna space thermal light bulb out of the way. Uh, in my mind, it's pretty much disqualified since it's too expensive, first of all. And second off, they claim it's a 250 watt bulb, but with some magical way that they've increased the power output or something. But in my measurements, it seems to be closer to a 290 watt bulb that they're mislabeling as 250, which is problematic. So it's, it's kind of disqualified in my mind, uh, even if the performance is, is good. So anyway, we've got it set up. It's, it does have a nice kind of deep red kind of color to it. And we've got the milliwatts is 172. So it is pretty good. It's higher than the Ruby Lux but it's actually still lower, if you remember, it's lower than the GE and lower than the Therabulb, which those were around 260 to 280. So this is about 100 milliwatts less than the other two. So again, their claims of, of you know, magically amping up the power. Um, again, it could be the beam spread is, is different and that coverage area is very different. Um, so they are drawing 290 Watts. So it has to go somewhere. So it's probably a wider beam spread than what we're just measuring in the center here. Okay. So, you know, it's a pretty typical spectrum. It's similar to, uh, what we saw with the Therabulb actually, where you get a more of a hump of the red and less of the yellow. So you get that nice deep red kind of color to it. And impressively, maybe they did do something because we've got milliwatts per centimeter squared here of 17 
milliwatts per centimeter squared. The other two, like the, the GE and the Therabulb, they were around 12. So maybe they are getting a couple more milliwatts in this, you know, 600 to uh, 50, uh, 1050 range. But again, it's not worth an extra $90 when you can get a GE bulb, or if you want more power, you can get 10 GE bulbs for the same price as one of these bulbs. So if you want a lot more power, you can just get more cheaper bulbs and then strategically place them around yourself if you're doing like a sauna. Okay, and we'll quickly do the Philips and the FET electric bulbs. Right now we've got the Philips in, but both of these, uh, I was disappointed in seeing that big shadow in the middle and the kind of non-uniform kind of donut rings of intensity. But we see the power here is pretty good. It might even be better than uh, what we measured on the Rubilux. So it's still a good amount of power measuring from the center point and probably being affected by that shadow, but it's still a pretty good amount of power, even, even though it's it might be less less intensity in the middle and more on the sides and we'll, we'll check that out real quick but let's just check the spectrum so it's pretty typical spectrum so nothing nothing too special here it's got pretty good milliwatts per centimeter squared again because I'm measuring it slightly above our sensor here it might be actually picking up more intensity than what's in the middle of the, se the sensor here. So it's actually got really good 15 milliwatts per centimeter squared in that 600 to 1050 range. And again, the, you know, the power is pretty good. It's 100 milliwatts. Just to emphasize the point, we can move this off center over here. We move it off center and look how much higher it jumps up. So, you know, it's very hard to give like these kind of objective kind of measurements when you've got poor beam uniformity, because if you move the sensor, just we only moved it like three inches over to the side. So now we're a little bit offset. We're measuring that donut ring and look how high it jumped up. So it's almost as much as the Therabulb and uh, GE bulbs, what they were reading in the center, which makes more sense. You want to want that center point to know what where you're at. You don't want to be playing with this shadow in the middle and then a, a hot spot of a ring on the outside. You'd rather have that more of a hot spot in the middle or more uniformity over the over the middle and the sides. Okay, a little rapid fire round. We've got the Halco uh, prism lamp here. And like I said, I really like that kind of deep red color coming from it, but it seems to be suffering uh, pretty badly from that shadow in the middle where we're getting a pretty low number of 68 milliwatts. And then we get three milliwatts per centimeter squared of this entire region. So we do see it kind of suffers from probably the hot spot effects, and it does seem to be running a little bit less power I'm measuring 240 watts total. Okay, the Satco bulb, and this one's suffering the same problem. It's only 68 milliwatts in the center. Uh, it's got a nice bright kind of orangey look to it, uh, but it's still suffering from that shadow in the middle, and that's why we're getting a somewhat lower number in the middle. And we see a pretty typical spectrum and, you know, the lower kind of intensity from from this range of spectrum so it's it's pretty typical spectrum but again there's nothing particularly special about this bulb it is a good bulb but doesn't doesn't really wow us with the light uniformity now we've got the westinghouse bulb and it's pretty much the same power output so you know we're getting pretty redundant they're all pretty much the same this one's up up to about 72 milliwatts and it's got that nice uh, orangey kind of glow. So, you know, they're all typical. There's there's nothing you can do wrong here. Uh, and let's just check the spectrum. And we do get a little bit more power up around uh, six milliwatts per centimeter squared, but a very typical spectrum of what we've been seeing for all these different bulbs. So it's just reinforcement that if you get any red coated incandescent 250 watt bulb, you should expect a very similar spectrum so you don't need to overthink it and think you've got something wrong just because the company's not giving you the branding and the messaging that they're going to cure all your problems. You can get a pretty standard generic bulb and they all perform pretty similarly. 
Okay, the last one is our FET electric bulb. Again, it's a very nice bulb. It's low cost. You can usually find it at hardware stores or online for, you know, 10 to 15 bucks. But it suffered from the same issue of having a big shadow. So you see from the, the center point, we're back at 104. So that's very similar to the Philips bulb. And again, suffering from that same issue of having the shadow in the middle and then kind of a donut ring of intensity on the outside. So the spectrum is pretty similar again you know the milliwatts per centimeter squared is about six for this range uh, again that d it all depends on where we're picking up on that hot spot uh, but the the spectrum is pretty much what we expect from uh, seeing so many of these and you know again the fat electric and Philips and GE, they're not going to have all that fancy branding if they're infrared or for therapy or whatnot, um, but you can trust the spectrum is, is pretty much the same. That's determined by the filament inside the, bar the bulb. So it doesn't matter the kind of branding they have, they all fundamentally have a similar spectrum. So you can kind of trust you're getting some near infrared no matter what brand you're getting. And, you know, the intensity is not great. Again, if we move it over to the side like we did for the Philips, we do see that intense that intensity that milliwatts really start to jump up because now we're in more of that donut ring so the fat electric and the phillips they're they've made their way to the bottom of of my ranking because of the shadow issue um but again they still work don't throw them out if you've got them don't don't spend more money if if you don't need to uh they do work you can kind of make them work despite the the shadows so thanks for tuning in till the end. Uh, hopefully that helped and hopefully you got to take a look at all these bulbs and learn something from, from this testing and get more realistic intensity. Numbers.